cute, huh? They are putting us in the same cell so I could have another crack at you. All I see is you in jail. Yeah, well, I eat restraining orders for breakfast. I'll be back out cracking skulls while you'll be fighting the wine over this sink. It's better anyways. Nobody looking in. Nobody listening. We got a chance to do what we wanted to do for a while. What's that? Deal. You give me one of your dirty union officials. Just one. Because you know without any leads, I'm going to be hassling every working hick you've ever blinked at. Hassling Miss Jensen won't like that. Say. <clears throat> what would you give me to go to work for you? I could be a dirty cop. You never know. You're lying. How do you know? Once I stop working for the blue and start working for the green, you got something on me. Mm, trust is cheaper. Cheaper than a little advance warning next time we decide to sweep the docks. The name of every snitch in the city. You got a kid, Morgan. You're going to want things to run smoothly and have very simple needs. What do you call simple? What do you offer? I'm not offering. I heard an offer. You heard wrong. You don't trust me. You're lying. Sorry to break this up, gentlemen. Detective Garcia, uh, you're supposed to empty everybody's pockets at first, right? Right. Who do we miss? Him. Ah, oh, yeah. I like music. Yeah, I'm saying. Let's go. Not you. You, come on. What? And you always said Morgan couldn't smile. Sorry, buddy. She said that she's better and she's sorry. Sorry for what? For not telling you. You know, when she thought that Tony had Michael. <sighs> yeah. Okay, well, uh, thank you for taking care of it. Now let's get out of here. Wait, wait, wait. Can I what? still go to Florida? Yeah, why, why not? Because I, I, everything that happened. Are you going to be okay? No, y yeah, Justice just wants to make sure there's some distance between me and the, uh, and the strike. Wait. Uh, excuse me. Um... I'm going to go to Florida to help Carly with her mom's house. Have a safe trip. <laughs> All right. I'll be in touch. Let's go. <sighs> okay. <laughs> you see this place, Michael? This is your grandma Virginia's place. Mommy used to live here too. You want me to take him? Yeah. Yeah? I think he's tired. Okay. okay come on, buddy. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we no, go. it's okay. I'm going to throw you a coat. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Mama would have hated it like this. She always used to say that uh, we should. Open up the shades and let in some of that good old Florida sunshine. There we go. Just the way she liked it. <laughs> Coupon. Give her 19 cents off the economy size, and she was the happiest woman on earth. Is this you? Yes, it's <laughs> me when I was eight years old. I was the first time my mom let me swim in the ocean by myself. She got so excited, she made us go all the way home to get the camera. <laughs> she sounds nice. Yeah, she is. She was. 
What's that saying? You don't know what you've got until it's gone. I guess we both just learned that, didn't we? Yeah. I'm sorry. You probably want to get this over no, with. No, no, I don't, possible. actually. Are you sure? Yeah. If I was home, all I would be doing is catching heat about the strike or the hit on Jax. Besides, I've never been to Florida. Maybe after we finish here, we can, uh, we can take Michael to go see the ocean. Yeah. Get his picture taken this first time. Why not? Okay. So let's get to work? Thanks. I'm coming over to check on you. How's it going? It's okay, I guess. You know what's really sad, though? There's almost none of this stuff that I want. Maybe that's because the only thing you want is already gone. You mean my mom? Yeah. There was something else, you know? I mean, no, there was someone else, actually. I had a father, believe it or not. You never said anything about him. I don't really think about him very much. It's just, you know, now that mom died. You know where he is? He left and when I was, you know, just a little bit bigger than Michael. Haven't seen him since. It's funny, you know, because I was supposed to be the miracle that saved their marriage. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> wrong again. Ended up being just, just uh, me and mom. God, she loved me so much, Jason. Why couldn't I see that? I mean, she adopted me, she gave me a home. And she treated me just like I was her flesh and blood. And all I ever did was give her a hard time. Lie to her all the time, sneak out in the middle of the night, curse her to her face. It was like, our whole relationship was like, I was begging her to throw me out, to prove that she made a mistake by adopting me. You know, but she never saw it that way. She just, she just loved me no matter what. And when she came to poor Charles, she had just the best of intentions to surprise her good pal, Bobby Spencer. And, and what did she find out? The news that I had already been there for two years had wrecked Bobby's marriage, had lied to everybody in town, had lied to her, just like always. And she tried to find some way to deal with it, to cope with it, make sense of it. And I just got into a fight with her again. Like nothing had changed except this time, it, it was too much. She couldn't take it. I killed my mother. And I just, I don't know any way that I can make that right. Now, is this like when you thought you gave Michael the heart defect? You didn't, Carly, any more than you gave your mother a stroke. You had an argument, sure, but you didn't kill your mother. When she had her first stroke, I came down here, and I helped her out. I stayed with her for a few days. And then I went home, and I sent her a little bit out of my paycheck every month. And she was grateful. But it's not what she wanted, you know, and I could tell she wanted a daughter. That's what she wanted her whole life, and I never came through for her. I never told her about Michael. I never brought him to see her. The last words that I said to her were, go away, and I yelled them. Yeah, but, yeah, but she probably knew you didn't mean it. <laughs> no, she loved you, right? She was used to you. I know you don't mean half the stuff you say, especially when you're yelling. Besides, mothers and daughters fight all the time. Emily tells me about all the fights she has with Monica. Yeah, but mothers and daughters also make up, Jason. I never learned how to do that. You know what scares me? I mean, what really scares me the most is that one day Michael and I will start fighting and we won't ever stop. Why, why would you fight with Michael? You love him. Yeah, now. Look, we pick him up. We put him where we want him. 
We feed him, he smiles. Everything's great right now. But what's going to happen when he gets a mind of his own and he starts saying things like, no, I don't like you anymore, mommy. I mean, am I going to have the patience to be calm and just keep smiling? Or am I going to just start screaming at him and never stop? Carly, if you don't want to do something, you won't. Uh, no, it's... sorry. Wait a minute. You have me confused with somebody else. Who? You! You won't fight with Michael because that's not how you operate. You will show him things by example, and he will be proud to follow you. He's going to look up to you, Jason. When he's 15, when he's 20, the rest of his life. <sighs> I'm sorry. I know what you're probably thinking right now, that... <laughs> In 15 or 20 years, you won't know me or Michael. No. I wasn't thinking that at all. I was trying to remember fighting with people I love. Why I did it. And if I could ever fight with Michael that way. I never want to tell him what to do. But I don't want him to get hurt either. Unless that's his, unless that's his choice. But I don't know when a kid's old enough to decide that. You see, Carly, when I started working for Sonny, people said I didn't understand things. They were right. Not that I'm sorry, Sonny warned me up front, but he was the first person who believed in me enough to take me in my word and let me choose what I wanted. I have to do that for Michael. I have to. But what if he chooses something that hurts him or puts him in danger? How am I supposed to stand back and let that happen? I guess we'll figure that out when it happens. Michael, Michael won't choose anything that hurts him, Jason. You'll advise against it, and he will trust you so much. He'll know. Whatever his father says is the right thing, and he will love you so much that he'll listen, and he'll let you protect him and keep him safe. Someday he'll have to make his own choices. Yeah, but you'll teach him how, and when the time comes, he'll be able to trust himself. You know, the whole time that I was pregnant, I was running around trying to find out what was the best thing to do for me and my baby. And it turned out to be you. Thank you. I wouldn't have known Michael if you hadn't showed up that night. So I got as much as you did, maybe more. I guess that means that maybe I can make a good decision every now and again, huh? Maybe I'm not so hopeless as a parent after all. Isn't it strange mm. that you spend half of your life accumulating things that seem so important to you, like knickknacks and pictures and letters from special friends, and then you die, and people get rid of it in a day. Maybe we should take a break. Okay, yeah. Oh, wow. She would have been a good grandmother for him. Now he's never even going to see her. Well, you can tell him when he gets older all about her. And I can teach him about packing boxes. That's something for him to look forward to.